So uh, when I talk about the five honors, oh, uh, many people, you know, I talked about them. Terry, you wasn't here, so I can give you an overview. I talked about the five things God required that we honor. And number one is honor God. Number two, honor his word. And number three, honor his house. Number, and number four, honor his man. And number five, honor yourself. Now, you say, well, why didn't you put parents in there? But let me explain something to you. Because one of the commandments is honor your mother and your father. And that's including in honoring yourself. He that dishonors his parents dishonors himself. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I got a revelation. And, and I wish I could tell you all I came up with it, but I did. Uh, I was listening to uh, when I was, you know, when I tell people, I was telling, I, I was a young, young minister. But I tell people what, what. I'm on, and I was, I told one man about it, and I said, uh, we, we got on the subject of honoring your parent. He said, even if they wasn't there for you, you need to honor them. And this is the revelation, Pat, because sometimes the best thing a parent can do for you is leave. So many times people get mad at the parent for leaving, but they did you a favor because they knew what was in them. Think about some of the people that's messed up because their parents stayed and really just put all that craziness in their head. So, Quisha, the best thing some parents can do is, you know, you said, I ain't got no respect for my dad. He left me. He did you a favor. Because... If he stayed in the imagery of, of his chicanery and misdeeds was the only image you had. You think about this. When people move, God put someone in your life that actually was structured and principled people that gave you foundation that you are today. So the best thing, so you honor that person even, the, even for leaving. You still honor them. Some people say, I can't honor him. He ain't no man. You honor him because God said it, not because they, uh, they earned it. You know, a man said once, uh, I give respect to who earned it. That's not what the Bible said. You don't have to earn respect. You're entitled to respect if you're a human being. So when you are one of those people that think a person have to earn respect, then you're already off point. Now, but the number one thing I want to talk about here is honoring God. And I want to expand on, on that premise just a little bit. When you think about honoring God, now, th th there are, a, I'm going to deal with it from the book of Exodus with the, with the Ten Commandments, because of the Ten Commandments, four directly dealt with man's relationship with God, six dealt with man's relationship with man. It's kind of debatable because one of them could be between man and God, but that you deal with, but, but, but the larger premise is six of them deal with your relationship with your brothers and sisters. But there's no doubt the first four deals with man's relationship with his creator. And if you learn to honor your creator, all other things will line up in your life. People wonder why there are areas of their life that is off. Hey, Linda, I didn't, with your, oh, you, that's my friend. She went to high school with me too, Linda. Uh, and her husband, David. Uh, people wonder how God blessed people and how, if you want God to bless your business, bless your marriage, bless your children, bless your family, honor God for who he is. Now, some people think that it's, you have to embrace another deity to dishonor God, a false God, and whereas that is true, that's not exclusively true, you can make something else a God, a superficial God or artificial God. Many people, uh, they, anything that becomes an object of worship becomes a, a, a God to you. And so you can make uh, uh, your house, your car, your wealth, your looks, your man or your woman, your God. And when he said, thou shalt have no other God before me, he mean that entirely and exclusively because you should not have nothing on the throne but God in your life. If you put something on the throne of your life, friendship, relationship, 
Miss Eleanor, it's good that we that you love your spouse and you honor them in their place. But you don't put them, I love my wife above everything. No, you love God first. Right. I mean, you can be number three in your life, even four. But but you don't make somebody else number one. At best, make them number two. Right. Always make God number one. Because you're going to need God to hold it together every relationship. Because relationships break up and come. People will fall short of your expectation. In fact, most people will fall short of your, even in church relation. If you have an unhealthy, unrealistic view of church, you're going to get mad. And that's why people leave church. They transfer or they go other places. Or they, some of them say, I'm not doing organized religion right now. Well, what you want, disorganized religion? There's nothing wrong with the fact. But if you have a realistic view of church, of religion, of people, of, even of pastors, it's a healthy thing to let people be people. Right. Now, most people would not have themselves as a pastor. Right. Right. Would you be your pastor? No, no, I know what, because they know what they do. Right. Unless they are delusional. Now, some people are delusional. You know, they feel like they live next door to God. But most people that that's balanced, they know who they are when they're home and nobody's looking. Man, let me tell you something. I feel like when I'm at home in my hometown, I'm God's man of grace and power. But when I'm at home, I'm just leaving. <laughs> Cause I, and I say that because when I go to my hometown, no matter how much I put myself on a pedestal, they're going to knock me off. Hey, Leon. Pastor Frazier. Yeah, okay. Leon, can you help me over here? <laughs> uh, one guy, he, I've been looking for you. Really? Okay, can you help me move these law hooks? I got on my Sunday shoes. They'll never let you get the big head. When people, and it's good to have people around you that love you because they will tell you the truth. Now, a lot of folks, they have an unrealistic expectation of God. Right. So I've heard people say, I, now, I'm going to be honest with y'all, and I got some friends that are listening to our Caucasians, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. I haven't heard many black people say this, but I got a lot of Caucasian friends. In fact, but they all say, I was mad at God. Most black people ain't never got mad at God. Because we always been in a position where we need him. But y'all heard people say that, right? Yeah. And when mama died, I was mad at God. I was like, I don't think I would take that liberty. I would be that comfortable saying, I ain't never been comfortable with somebody else saying it. But uh, when I hear people say that, I was at the cancer treatment center in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, with someone, and, and, and a lady said that, that she said she had just finished school. And I was sitting there thinking, you really ought not to be that way. At the end of the day, God has been nothing to me but good. And many times, a lot of the things that happen in our life are our fault, not God. And God sometimes has to bless us over us and in spite of us to get us to where we want. Now, let me get to you because I'm going to give you a scripture on it because they probably eating up the text, Jared. They tearing me up. So Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Uh, the five honors. Number one. Number one. Uh, verse two. Well, well let's, let's start at verse one. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Now, he didn't need a reason. Pearl, he didn't need a reason to be honored as God. But you think if you're there for people, they would appreciate it. That's right. That's right. Sometimes the least appreciative person is the person you did the most for. Mm -hmm. You can't extort God. Right. You can't blackmail God. Right. So what it says here, God said, I brought you out of bondage mm -hmm. and out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, Tony, it may not be a physical Egypt, but we all been through something. That's that we had to be delivered from. Right. And the worst thing you could do is not appreciate it. Right. 
and not thank God for it. You thank God every day Amen. for what he brought you through because God has been better to you than you deserve. Amen. So, so listen to it, verse 3. It says this. Uh, it said, thou shalt have no other God before me. Not your job, not your wife, not your husband, not your car, not your boo, or your boo-boo. <laughs> your boo is be your, your, your significant other, and your boo-boo is your children. Some people worship their children. Don't worship. See, you're not balanced. And when people are not balanced, they make imbalanced decisions because they put the person. And when you put people too high in your life, they're going to always let you down. So you got to, uh, to be healthy and have a healthy conscience. You got to see people the way God sees them. Yeah. All right. You don't put things. The Bible said things made with hands, cars, clothes, job. Derek, I know people that make their job their God. This is the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. Woo, 30 years, they pat you on the head and give you a gold watch and kick you out the door. <laughs> you don't worship no job. Amen. Man, they go rain, sleet, or snow. And they go sick and everything. Cause that job is not your God. Right. And I'll tell you something else. That job is not your source. Right. That's right. That's right. Now, now that we get this out the way, so you always remember that uh, you should have what? No. no other God. And when he said before me, he said, God said, period, but before me. As you pray, that's what he means, as you pray, as you worship, don't have no other God. I've seen people, they have China in a cabinet, never eat out of it. Like an altar in the house. All those, that beautiful China. And they live and die and never eat off those plates. I know. They never drink from the teacup. They ate, never ate from the saucer, never ate salad in the salad bowl, never ate from the plate. And some, when they die, their children will set it out on the lawn and say, yard sale. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sit on my furniture. It's the good stuff. And they die and never sit on it. And the first thing them children do, sit on it, take that plastic off, cross their leg, and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Dumping the ashes. Don't make things your God. You're going to be disappointed. Don't make people. When you put people too high, no one lives up to it. Not your priest, your preacher, your prophet, your teacher, your mama, your daddy, your father, your sister, your brother, your spouse. Nobody can live up to God. So don't put people up too high. Let people be human. You'll be a better person, and they'll be a better person for it. And you have a better relationship. If I expect me and Pat to have a differences, then we can get through the storm because I don't expect her to be something she's not. And by the same token, in return. So if we have a disagreement, the Bible says wise men differ, but fools fall. I just can't get old. <laughs> you just hurt me so bad, Pastor. <coughs> How did I hurt you? I had you up here. Baby, I never should have been up there. My feet are clay. I couldn't live up to it. That's why you got a lot of hypocrites. Folk with fake lives, they good in your presence. But they got a whole nother life because they can't be themselves around you. Allow people and empower people to be their true self. And if you do that, you'll see a different person. They're, they're better people. They live a true life. But you got people around here living in front. I don't say that in front of Sister Reed because I don't want Sister Reed to know I'm like this. You don't want Sister Reed to know you messed up? No, I don't want her to know. She gonna find out. So just be yourself. Be yourself. If you are yourself, you don't have to pretend. Only God is perfect. Jeremy, only God is right in all of his ways. I love Jeremy. He know I do. 
me and I, I've been with Jeremy through some difficult times. He's been with me through some difficult times. And, and, and when he met Ashley, I knew him way before he even got married. So we have a bond. I, I knew Jolly probably long I knew anybody in here. Jolly knew his daddy. I know so many of his folk. But let me tell you something. They know me. So when you can tell people, look, I ain't always right. I'm, so I'm with you long as, I used to hear folks say that to preachers. I'm with you long as you're right, Rem. Well, then I don't need you. Because I'm not going to always be right. In fact, I need you more when I'm wrong to help me get right. I'm helping you get right. But as soon as you think I'm not right, you're going to leave me? I don't need somebody, oh, you let me down, you let me down. No, you were let down when you joined, because you joined on an unrealistic uh, expectation. No, you want to know the truth, the truth make you free. The truth is your feet are made of clay and mine's too. We're saved by grace and I need it. I don't know what you saved by, but I'm saved by grace and I need it. Now, I, I'm going to live the best I can. But my best is not good enough because the Bible said we all fall short. Amen. So people, oh, well, let me tell you. You know what? I don't mind if people, I tell people this all the time. I don't mind if you tell mine. Just tell yours too. I, I, I feel like this. Most folk that love talking about folk, they want to camouflage and hide there. See, there's no woman. Can't no one, not my wife, not my mom, nobody, uh, say, I was there for him and, and, I, and he had what he got. No. Man, I was left out there dancing with wolves. So if I made it, I made it on my own. So tell the whole story. Right. Some, I hear folks, some, some of y'all, when, you, when, when your children get in trouble, they come to me and they'll say, don't talk about him, Pastor, pray for him. But do that with me then. <laughs> you don't give me a break and I'm doing good. He ain't saving nobody. He ain't preaching to nobody. We have more sympathy for the messed up yeah. than the stand up. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I can't be there with Rem Fraser because he ain't right. Uh, well, I ain't say, I didn't tell you when you joined I was God. I told you I was a man right. from Talladega County. Moved in, okay. hung out in Dolomite and Hurry Town. Right. And that's it. Yeah. Ain't nothing else to me. Right. Everything I ever done, you can find somebody that say, hey. But then a lot of times folks say, no, that ain't him. And I like that too. Folks, no, that ain't him. And somebody said, did he do that? No, that wasn't him. And I love that. I love that, that the people need to know you. That's why the Bible says, know them that labor among you, because folk will lie. Uh -uh, uh -uh, that's not his character. I mean, he ain't perfect. But many times in your life, the closer you get to God, the clearer your life becomes. The closer you get to God, the better you understand life and your purpose and your reason for being here. But you got to get close to God. And you, the way you get close to God, number one, is you honor him. You honor God. Give me the next one, Jared. What it say? Thou should not make unto, unto thee any graven image of any likeness for of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Now, it says this. Don't be around here. Now, somebody said, well, what about statues? Now, I'm just going to. Take a liberty and say, say it what it says. That's right. <laughs> you know, I don't have enough sense to, to, to dissect which we could and which we can't. But I know you should not have statues worshiping them. That's right. That's right. But I'm not clear. My understanding here is he said thou should not make any. So, you, so people around here worshiping, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I know first thing I said, well, the Catholic Church, yeah. I'm not sure they're going to make it either. <laughs> and I, I'm sorry, Cliff, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know, I, if I thought they were right, I'd be Catholic. That's the reason I'm here. Because, first of all, 
you know, I don't agree with the priest. The, he want to do what the Lord didn't tell him to do. You get rid of a lot of your problems, just go on and just say, no, we, we ain't doing too good in this area. Let the priest get married. <laughs> just come, I'm just saying. Get rid of all these lawsuits. Y'all go ahead. You can solve a lot of your problem with just simplicity. People around here trying to be something they not see, and then it come out years later. I don't know. I'm just saying, don't make no images of anything. That's why I'm not Catholic, because I don't believe in it. People kissing the statue of Mary, kissing the feet of the statue of Jesus, he's not there. And, but in that same vein, don't make your cat lack <laughs> your God. <laughs> or your solitary, or whatever else it is. You know, that was made by somebody. Right. Don't get so caught up in things that you can't see God. Right. So don't make any graven images. Y'all got that one? Give me the next one, Jerry, because for time's sake. All right. Thou should not bow down thyself to, to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord. I cover that. Okay. Uh, visiting the iniquities of the father upon the children, uh, upon the third and fourth generation of them that, now, now, that hate me. Now, Pat, it, it love less, hate. You, when you run the reference love, it said, uh, of hate here, it means that you love less. But because when they say hate, that they didn't have a word to fit, so love less, so they say hate. Now, you you got something that you putting above the throne of God in your life. You ain't going to fare well. You make sure that God is on the throne of your life. Now, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. God said, I got folks that love me. You, you don't have to. It, you'll be better if you do. But thou should not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now, I can't say a lot of the stuff I need to say right now because I'm getting too close to the wire. So I'm going to use some initials. Most of y'all know, if you listen to music, if you watch movies, or you talk with some of y'all, then y'all going to know some of these words that are, it is a sin, it's abomination, and it's totally against God if you are one of those people that use the word GD. You want God to condemn it or to damn it? And you just use it just casual? That's wrong. But it's an abomination. And there's another one. I, I heard it said in a movie, and I quit watching the movie. I couldn't watch it no more. It was horrible. I said, you know, that just rent the whole Jesus effing God. I said, oh, my God. That's exactly, I said, who in their right mind could say something so horrible and distasteful? And see, we, we follow the culture, and the culture is corrupt. Right. It's polluted, and so that's why if you're getting your, your training, your culture from Hollywood, Hollywood is the same folk, you, you know, they gave us Charles Manson, Sharon Tate, and all that. Hollywood been wrong a long time. So, and 90% of the cussing is taking the Lord's name in vain or cussing about God. Now, the, you just read, you will not be guiltless. And then it says, go down to three general, curse your children. Right. People curse their children by cursing. Right. Now, that is horrible. And some people say, well, that ain't cursing. The Bible said anything you speak in a profane way is a curse, which means curse. Now, cussing and cursing is two different things. I know. But cussing bring a curse. Right. So... Why would you, the Bible said, bless and curse not. Why you speak a curse over your child? And a lot of parents, they said they cuss their children out, but they put a curse over their children. And then they wonder why they don't get good children. Bad parents want good children. You have put nothing in that child but pollution, profanity, insincerity, and immorality. And then you, that boy ain't going to do nothing. He can't. 
He's living under a curse. That's right. Right. Break the curse by speaking good things. Yeah. Honor God with your life. Yeah. Honor God with your mouth. Honor God with your lifestyle. Honor God with your relationships. You know, honor God with your relationship. Don't get in no ungodly relationship with folk. If that person don't love God, why, why are you hanging around them? It, you just read it, said they hate God. If they hate God, you think they're going to love you? I see so many women, excuse me, ladies, excuse me, but so many women want to rehabilitate a God hater. He hate God. He ain't going to never treat you right. I don't know why he don't do me right. Take my EBT card, <laughs> living in my house on my Section 8 with my children, and... Why shouldn't he? Jolly, we came up with a man forced to be a man. The, the culture have stolen the initiative for a man to be a man. Man, I'm down here, oh girl, you know, I'm gonna go over here with her. You know, she got a spot, and I'm gonna chill over there. I'm gonna chill over there, you know. You gotta, no nah, man, I'm, 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 gonna get, I'm gonna get this car this, this car fixed up and I'm gonna stay over here with her. Can you take me to the store? No, <laughs> can't take me to the store in my car. And Friday night, you gonna be at home? No, I ain't married to you. He married to you when he eating the EBT. <laughs> he married to you when he come and crash in your house that the government said you can have if you ain't got no man. That's right, that's right. The government said, I'm your daddy. Who's your daddy? <laughs> I'm your daddy, Uncle Sam. <laughs> and, and Uncle Sam said, they had to check and see, like, and, and you got to hide like you cheat. Yep. Don't have, <laughs> yep. Yep. Junior, take your shoes with you when you leave, cause them folk come to check their apartment. <laughs> And you really to live under those conditions? The government is your daddy. Right. Right. And you around here, Cliff told me don't say it no more. Don't pimp, well, I can't say that one. But you being pimp while pimping. <laughs> Trying to pimp the system. And mad. You ever see people, they mad all the time. Man, I'm trying to get up on my feet. No, you ain't. You can't get on your feet when you're laying on your back. The sleepy, the sleepiest folk. I never seen so many sleepy people. Chilling. Where you at, man? Nothing. Where you at? Chilling. What you doing? Nothing. As soon as you get $2 above broke, they get a gun. Right. So everybody got a gun. Three things you can guarantee if you hang out. You can run across somebody with an attitude and a gun. Because, man, my neighbor told me that he pawned his gun. I said, good. Hey, Reverend, man, look, man, I had to pawn my gun. Can you help me out? No. I think they 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 more responsible than you. Ain't, it ain't enough deers in the world for you to need a gun that can shoot 160 times in a minute. And it ain't for no deers. It's for y'all. If you don't have enough sense to raise yourself up and see that this is some set up to bring you down, then you're a fool. You know, they, you think that this is by accident that they allow you. They know where you are. And don't you know they know where you are? I'm gonna tell you something. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, next week, first chance you get. Don't get on your phone. Just say something in front of your phone. Like I sure would like some pizza. See how many commercials hit your phone. <laughs> I'm, I feel like I wasn't listening, but in case you get hungry today, stop by Domino's. <laughs> I was like, wow. That's for real. 
So I tell people, you know, pull up and do better. People want God to do something that they won't do for him. People want to leave wrong, but they want to get right. People want God to answer their prayers, and as soon as God bless them, they spend all the energy to get away from him. How can God bless you when you won't bless him? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let me tell you something. If you're not willing to live for him, then why do you want God to bless you? God can bless your mind. The Bible says he will give you a new mind. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, that you may know the good, accepted will of God. Now, now, when you give God all your broken pieces, God puts you back together. When your mind is not thinking right, God will heal your thinking. When your body is not working right, God will heal your body. God will give you signs and wonders and miracles, but you got to be in the right place and you got to say the right thing. Let me tell you something. God is not going to speak to you. Stop lying. He don't talk to folks that are not with him. If somebody's talking to you in your mess, that's the devil. And the devil ain't got nothing good. He's the father of all lies. He's a deceiver. And he'll tell you that right is wrong, wrong is right, up is down, and down is up. You're following the wrong God. Come before God. God, the, the first thing, if God told you anything other than get saved first, that's not God. Before God bless you with a car, before God bless you with a house, he wants you to get your soul right. There are people talking, the Lord told me this. The Lord told me, don't listen to you, Pat. He didn't tell you to get saved. Then that wasn't God. See, you, we, we done fell for the rope of dope over and over again. Listen, get up and clean yourself up and become a decent human being. You listen to me. When you dress better, you walk better, and you talk better. There are some men spend their whole day chasing after lies. They live their life off a lie. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get myself together. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to never come. You, you want better, you got to do better. There are folks that hate everybody because they think everybody hates them. Just be nice to folk. The Bible said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Listen, you don't, don't keep folks in your circle that disrespect you. Don't keep folks around you that don't honor you. There's always somebody that you, if don't bless folks that don't bless you. It's so easy to see why some people's life is falling apart. They left God out of the equation. You can't keep God out of your life and expect for God to bless you in your life. Everything that has come to you have been messed up and jacked up because everything you did was against God. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separated, said the Lord. Many people say, well, how do you come out from among? Quit your wicked ways. Clean up. Change your evil thoughts. Come to the house of the Lord and learn his word. And I know the world will tell you the preacher just wants your money. Well, that's a lie. I don't get a dime from this church and they can't So what they're going to say. I built it and I don't get nothing. So they can't tell that lie. And the same people that tell you that, they want your money. There are people that tell you the church is just a con. No, no, it may be some cons in some churches, but everybody ain't turning their back on God. Everybody ain't fake breaking. And if man is playing, God is real. God is real. I don't care who's wrong, God is real. Now let me tell you something, you can't pimp God. You can't hustle God. You can't play God. If a preacher get wrong, God will pull him down. You can trust God. He'll lead you in the right path. God will lead you to good people. God put real people in your life. Stop putting the real people over there with the fake. A lot of folks have hurt you, but it wasn't the good folk. You got a lot of folks do a lot of jacked up stuff, but you know why they do jacked up stuff, Cliff? Because they were messed up when they got there. You got to let God clean you up. You need a clean mind, a clean heart. Listen to me, it's a whole lot of corruption can come to you. Looking at movies of violence and corruption, singing violent, lewd songs have gotten in your spirit. Now everything about you is low and lewd, loud and obnoxious. Well, you ain't gonna change overnight. You got to get with God and grow. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. 
You got saved instantly, but you got to grow in God. And you got to grow away from something. Grow away from cussing. Grow away from disrespect. Grow away from dishonor. Grow away from anger and grow to God. When you yoke with God, you ever see some people got peace no matter what's going on in that? They got God in their life. When you got God in your life, you live better. I see everybody out here hustling, trying to get money, trying to get money. They starting this business, they selling this, they doing that, and they all falling on their face because they chasing after that dollar. That's the worst God in the world is the dollar. Second Peter says this, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Now it didn't say money was the root of all evil, but because if I love money more, I'll shoot you. I'll hurt you. A lot of, when people love money, let me tell you something. Last year at this church, at this church, young man that was at this church, his mom here now, go here now, his first cousin, and the reason I said that, because they found him guilty. His first cousin picked him up because he had got into, he came into some money. $10,000. Now, now, ten, now, you don't think folk, Paul folk will kill you for $10. And you walking around with $10,000 in a backpack? Took him over there at the end of we know the projects and shot him six times. First cousin, two sisters' children. The love of money is wicked. His body lay there in the rain, that family forever destroyed and distraught. 90 year old grandmother ain't gonna never be here because the children ain't never coming together. We're gonna have to learn, and the only reason I can say it, because they found him guilty. John, I couldn't say it, I could say allegedly if they hadn't found him guilty, but the system said, the, the grand, they is, so let me tell you something. We had a young man, went to this church, 17 years old, wanted one of those Hellcats, go over there to Lake Cyrus and get the car, and the man run out, and he shoot the man. Yep. Now he's finished, 17. The devil is playing tricks on these young folk mind. Listen to me, so much stuff gonna come in style, man, by the time, they're going to have flying cars. Just stick around. You know how many folk getting out of prison now don't even know how to use a cell phone? Because they went in, they went in on a humbug. Don't let the devil steal your life. Don't let the devil steal your youth. Don't let the devil steal your it, It's going to come. You'll get it in time. You'll get it in time. The devil got us so confused and so messed up, Linda, that we hate each other. We don't even like each other. I've never seen so many black folk, we don't like each other. We don't like each other. Let me tell y'all something. In the sadness, if a man saw another man, I, Jeremy, what's up, brother? That's how we greeted each other. See, Jolly, right on, brother. Now it's, what's up, dog? We done lowered ourselves down to animals now. Dog. And even more than that, Lower than that, dog. No, it closer being a brother. You don't respect the dog, but you respect the brother. Raise your standard. Raise your standard. That's why we, we let them lay in the streets like a dog and we kill them because we ain't got no respect for nothing. Don't respect the women. Don't respect the children. Don't respect the community. Let me tell you something. Don't have nothing to do with the community, but tear it up. You got a few young black men trying to make something out of their life, and they got to have something to be careful because all these folk walking around here, they, they want to catch you slipping. Oh, y'all, come on now. It is bad, and nobody talk about it, let's pray. Because you know what? I told a friend of mine, I said, you know, he talked about where he live over the mountain. I said, you act like they ain't got no cars. I mean, they could drive over the mountain. That's why you better pray and help everybody, because they'll come over the mountain. They'll go to the valley. They'll cross the lake. They'll get you. You just look like you have something they want. I ain't living in the hood. I moved out the hood. Yeah, buddy. But you can't keep the hood away from you. Man, they'll see you at the store and follow you. 
He in Publix and they follow you. You got to go home. Yeah, right. It's horrible how the godless people that don't honor God is going down the drain and want to pull everybody with them. It's horrible the lifestyle people choose to live when they exclude God. If you want God to bless you, start with God. Come clean. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up. I need to do better. My life is empty, and I need you. Come clean with God. Tell God, I'm, 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 a, I'm a sinner. I have evil thoughts, and God will fix it. Now listen, if you're here today and the Lord's speaking to your heart, I want to pray for you. Let me tell you something. At 17 years old, I made a conscious decision. I made a conscious decision that I want to live the rest of my life for God. And I'm going to be honest with you, many times, many times, I felt like I wasn't where he wanted me to be. Let me tell you something. My daughter told me one day she was adding up the hours, and she said, Daddy, you've been to school long enough to be a doctor, medical doctor. I said, yeah, but I hope I make some good in the field that I chose. I chose this at 14. I said, this is what I would do. And I know that there's a lot of other professions, and a lot of folk make it seem like preaching is not a good thing. But the Bible said, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? God want to call some of you. He want to use you, but he can't use you through that evil. Clean up yourself. If there's anybody here that won't pray over your life, stand where you are. If you won't pray, if there's someone that won't pray over your life, just stand where you are and bow your head. Look, you don't have to say nothing to your neighbor, to anyone. Just bow your head. And repeat after me, my God, my Father, I stand before you empty. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your spirit. Forgive every sin, every iniquity, and every transgression. From this day forward, I will honor you with my life. I honor you for being my creator for being my father which art in heaven I love you God with all my heart and from this day forward I surrender and submit to your divine authority in Jesus name Amen give the Lord a hand clap of praise Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful for y'all coming. I'm so glad you like my friend Ernest. Just get for your miracle. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. No, oh, you've been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be all right. Trials and trouble come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready. For your miracle, get 